In this video, we are going to show how to solve, numerically, a nonlinear equation, using MATLAB. Here we are going to consider four nonlinear equations as examples. The first equation is a quadratic equation. The equation writes x square, minus 5x, plus 4, equals 0. It's easy to obtain theoretical solutions of this equation. It's considered here in order to compare theoretical and numerical MATLAB solutions. The second equation considered here, is a cubic equation. It writes, x cubic minus, square root of 2, plus square root of 3, plus square root of 5, all times x square, plus, square root of 6, plus square root of 10, plus square root of 15, a, times x, minus square root of 30 equals 0. Here again we have considered this equation because it is possible to obtain the solutions analytically. The third equation to be solved writes exponential of the square root of x minus x times logarithm of x the all square is equal to 0. For this equation, it is more laborious to obtain analytical solutions. The fourth and last equation involves trigonometric functions. It writes, 2 times cosine of x, plus 5 times sine of x, minus 3, equals 0. Here, it is possible to find the theoretical solutions. But deriving solutions needs few steps using some trigonometric rules. There are several ways to solve nonlinear equations with MATLAB, here we will use the function VPAI solve. The syntax of the function writes as follows. S is equal to VPAI solve, and three parameters, ACN, VAR, and init param. S is the solution of the equation, as solved by the function VPAI solve. It is the output of the function. VPAI solve is the function name. It should be written in using lowercase letters. Commonly the function uses three parameters, three inputs. The first input, is ACN, or the function's expression. The second input is the name of the variable or the equation's unknown. And the last or third input, is the initial value. This is the initial guess of the solution. Numerical solving highly depends on this initial guess. If the equation has multiple solutions, the function gives the solution which is the closest to the initial value. Let's start with the first example. We are going to solve the equation x square minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. Coding is very simple. First we need to define the variable, here the variable is x. Second, we need to define the expression of the function, for which we will calculate the zeros. The function f, x, is equal to the polynome, x square minus 5x plus 4. The last step is to solve the equation using VPAI solve. The equation to solve is f of x is equal to 0. The variable here is x. And we give 0 as initial value for the equation solving. Running the code, gives two solutions 1 and 4. 1 and 4 correspond exactly to the theoretical solutions. As x square minus 5x plus 4 can be factorized as x minus 1 times x minus 4. Here the numerical solution of MATLAB matches exactly with the theoretical solution. Also VPAI solve, gives here the two solutions of the equation. This will be the case for polynomial equations. For non-polynomial equations, VPAI solve, gives only one solution, the first it finds. Thus, for polynomial equations, it is not worth giving the initial value as the function can find all solutions. As a second example we are going to solve the cubic equations shown here. The code is almost the same, except for the definition of the function f, x. Here, f of x is equal to, x cubic minus, square root of 2, plus square root of 3, plus square root of 5, all times x square, plus square root of 6, plus square root of 10, plus square root of 15, a, times x, minus square root of 30. It is worth noting that no initial value was given, 
as this is a polynomial equation. Running, the code, gives three solutions. The three solutions correspond, to square root of 2, square root of 3, and square root of 5, respectively. This also correspond to the theoretical solutions of the cubic equation. The third example is different from the two first equations. Here the equation is non-polynomial and involves exponential and logarithm functions. Thus, the function VPAI solve gives only one solution, even if the equation has multiple solutions. Here coding is quite similar. We have just changed the expression of the function f of x to match the new equation. And we have given the value of 10 to the initial value. We are going to add one line of coding. We are going to evaluate the function f in the obtained solution. The value of f here should be 0. Running the MATLAB program gives one solution, which is approximately equal to 2.444, and the value of f in the solution is 0. Here again VPAI solve is working well. In order to check if there are other solutions, we have run the program with different initial values. Now if the initial value is lower than 1 or higher than 10 million, the program didn't converge, and we got no solution. If the initial value is between 10 and 100, the obtained solution is around 2.445. And if the initial value is between 1000 and 1 million, the solution is 191.07. It seems then that the equation has only two solutions, which are almost equal to 2.445 and 191.07. The last equation is also non-polynomial and involves trigonometric functions. In terms of coding, we have just modified the expression of the function f of x. The solution will be here by default in radian. Thus we have add a fifth line in the code to convert the solution from radian to degrees. Running the code gives a solution around 0.21 radian or 12.05 degrees. In this equation also, the result should be dependent on the initial value. Thus, we are going to modify a little bit the program. Let's rewrite the same program. With first defining the variable x. Then defining the function f. Then calculating the solution with VPAI solve. Then writing the solution. And, finally converting the solution from radian to degrees. In order to check the effect of the initial value. We are going to choose this value randomly. Instead of giving a specific value to the third parameter. Here we going to assign the value true to the random option. We are switching on the option random for the initial value. We need to run this program several times. So, first, we define a number of iterations. Which corresponds to number of time we would like to repeat solving the equation, each time with a different random initial value. So here we chose ni ter to be 10. Then we need to use a loop for end. And now, each solution, once calculated, is stored in vector named sol. Each time, the solution is stored, in the term number j, of the vector sol. The last thing, is that the function f, is 2 pi periodic. Thus we need to find solutions only between minus pi and pi. Or between minus 180 and 180 degrees. So here, each time the obtained solution, is converted to the range minus pi, pi. Running the code, gives two distinct solutions in the desired range, 0.21 and 2.17. In degrees, the two different solutions are 12.05 and 124.34 degrees. Thanks for watching.